Gutter Trash is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. Gutter Trash. My name is Eric. Oh, my name is Jason. What? <laughs> I forgot my line. Uh, I, only have, I only have one line. I, I thought I saw... I, don't, I, I swear out of my, the peripheral, peripheral vision, I thought I saw someone walking through your hallway and it scared the fuck out of me and I forgot my line. Are you drunk? No, I'm just drinking water. You high? No, don't think so. Wow, this is a terrible start. Eh, whatever. <laughs> I really did. I was like, I, I swear. It was like the shadow of a creepy guy, tall guy, skinny guy. Did you, do you, do you know who lived, used to live here before you? Uh, yeah. Did he, did he hang himself or anything? Uh, well, actually, there was a person who lived in the upstairs apartment who did. Really? Are you yeah. serious? Uh-huh. <laughs> it's fucking creepy. <laughs> uh, did he, was it a tall, skinny guy? Um, I don't know. I didn't know him. Wow, I feel a little kind of weird right now. Yeah, yeah. That was bizarre. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, hey, and uh, it, it, it was in the room that uh, is above my bedroom. Right. Yeah. Which is what I'm looking at. Yeah. yeah. Through the hall there. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. You know, that's weird because uh, my ex-girlfriend, uh, once in a while, like uh, when she would uh, sleep over here, like, you know, she'd get up in the middle of the night or whatever and she'd ask, like, she'd come back to bed and like, did you say something to me? No, I'm sleeping. I heard voices. Weird. Yeah. And, and no one lived above. No one lived above me there. Yeah. That's pretty creepy. Yeah. Maybe you talked in your sleep. Uh, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure someone would have told me by now if mm-hmm. I did. Right. Right. Yeah. You yeah. would have. Maybe. I, don't, I don't think I've ever heard you talking yeah. in your sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Seen you sleep a few times. Yeah. Yeah. I pass out quite frequently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. When we were driving around uh, the other day, you were you were driving for like fourteen minutes. You fell asleep. I didn't say anything. Just yeah. didn't want to be impolite. Well, you, I mean, you kept within the lines for the most part. As long as you made sure that I was driving straight. Right. No, yeah. that's. I'm I'm sure we missed some turns because I probably don't turn. Who cares? Yeah, right. but but as long as I was going straight. Right. right. Not in straight into something. That would be that would be bad. Right. right. I would wake you up at that point. Well, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. No problem. <laughs> so I gotta say. If I could, uh-huh. uh, despite the fact that this has gone off the rails completely already. Yes. Ah, beverage. Um, beverage for everyone. It has been almost two weeks since we last recorded an episode. Has it really? It's been about a week and a half, a little over a week and a half. Okay. And uh, also kind of afraid, because uh, I like having at least like one show buffer. Uh, like mm-hmm. when we release an episode, uh, right. which which we did not have, so I was kind of like flying by the seat of my pants without a net Ooh, wow. and other bad analogies. <laughs> uh, uh, we were uh, fucking uh, nasty sea creatures without a rubber. Yes. So anyway, you know that old analogy. Yeah, that you one. Know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that old. Oh, it reminds me of my grandpa every time I hear that. Anyway. Uh, I'm not playing the game. Uh, okay, so it's been like a, it's been a week and a half, two weeks since we recorded last. That's right. Yeah. And um, I started realizing uh, a couple days ago, anyway, that uh, as much as I like to shit on what we do here, mm-hmm. and then say that you know, oh, this is the worst fucking episode ever, right? Or it's fucking painful to listen to an episode that we do. Mm-hmm. And God bless the people that actually do like it. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. You are awesome. But, but when I listen to it, I just hear, this is a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Why would anyone want to listen to this? To be nice to us. Right. Right. <clears throat> but I fucking love doing this. Yeah? It is fun. I missed doing this. Yeah? Me too. I was getting, like, withdrawals. 
It's like, when are we going to podcast again? Yeah. I, we got to do a show. <laughs> I don't That's even awesome. care if it's about being on topic. I, we we I just gotta just pick a random subject. And yeah, a bullshit episode. Yeah, like I love doing the show. Oh. I don't like producing it. All right. Uh, I don't like listening to it to have to write up the little thing on the website. Right. You're but like, uh, like I gotta try to be funny. Right. Right. But I loved like oh. sitting here hanging out with you and just talking about nerdy shit yeah. and being as uh, retarded and as offensive as I can be <laughs> and recording it for posterity. Yeah. I love this. Uh, I love doing this. It is fun. Yeah. It is fun. More people should do this. Uh, it's free. Uh, you know, basically. Not this specifically. Cause, oh, yeah. Uh, not, not like... D- d- don't horn in on our market. <laughs> <laughs> we have no market the, the, share already. The, yeah, this is... Uh, we are already... Uh, a, a voice in a crowd of millions, yeah. <laughs> as it is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's fun. I agree. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you're still down with that. Like, uh, I didn't think we would ever be, uh, you know, that we'd stick with it, right, or whatever. Right. I sound like we're at our 100th anniversary episode. I can't believe we've reached 57. <laughs> <laughs> the well, classic honestly, 57. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have, and it's awesome, and I love doing this. And thank you for doing this with me. I just wanted to get that out there. And, yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. When I listen to this uh, next week to uh, write up the the topic, You're like I sound so gay. Yeah, or it's it just awful, not funny at all. <laughs> well, it's really everything doesn't have to be funny. Yeah, well, you know? we're, we're first and foremost trying to entertain we people. We want to entertain people, but we want to entertain ourselves too. Exactly, exactly. And it's entertaining while we do it. It's just mm. not fun for me to listen to yeah. it again. I know what you mean. I've, I haven't listened to like the last forty episodes. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but again, hey, uh, all the listeners who who are out there who do, we, uh, thank you again for for listening and putting yeah. up with this. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, I don't recommend a second listen of any episode right, if you have right. to do it. Yeah, you know, certainly we don't give away enough information that would require it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I I am with you. I'm with you. Um. So yeah. So, so how's your day, man? Uh, good. I worked all day. Yeah. Nine hours. I mean, like, it's all, most of the day. Right. Uh, walked my dog three times, uh, somehow. That seems excessive. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> borderline, uh, compulsive. Huh? But, but yeah, other than that, good. Pretty good time. Pretty uh, good that's time. Good. That's good. You, and yourself. And yourself. Oh, uh, it has been a day of ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah. A roller coaster of emotions. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mostly, uh, up until like an hour ago, for the most part, my the roller coaster was just heading straight down to hell. Oh, yeah, that's a, uh, not a good destination for the roller coaster. The day started out promising. Uh, woke up, well, uh, I slept like 12 hours yesterday. Woke up this morning. Uh, Thursday is, is payday, usually. Yeah. 98% of the time, it's payday. Except for when they screw you over. It occasionally happens. Uh, but I had gotten paid today, and uh, it's uh, it's a week where I don't have any massive bills I need to pay, you know. So, what I like to do occasionally is on a Thursday morning when I do get paid and I have the extra money, I treat myself to a breakfast, mm-hmm. like a Waffle House, like a Waffle House, which is uh, pretty much the only thing that's open at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> that's in the area, right? And you did. I, I went to the Waffle House near where my coworker lives. Cause, mm-hmm. uh, just go from there to pick him up. Excuse me. And that's pretty much where the promising start ended. Oh. Just died on its fucking feet. No, no good. The Waffle House. I I get out of my car. There is a waffle waitress of some sort uh, outside the door smoking a cigarette. That's classic. <clears throat> classic Waffle House. You hear to eat. Yeah, what else am I going to do at a Waffle House at 5 in the morning? Just, just play the jukebox for a while. <laughs> I'll be in in a minute. <laughs> so I go in. I sit down. Uh, I actually brought my sketchbook this time, because usually what I find is when I go to a Waffle House, I just sit there waiting and bored. Uh, and bored, yeah. looking and just looking at you, stuff. So You can't draw on the placemats because they're plastic. Right. right. So I brought my sketchbook, so I had that to keep my, my time occupied while they you know prepared my, my breakfast. While they smothered and covered you. Right, right. Yeah, right. right. Which, that is exactly how I get my it's ash the way, It's the way to go. Yeah. Uh, 
the waitress inside uh, was talking to uh, the regulars who are all there uh, at the, that time in the morning. Uh, she comes over. She's like, can I get you anything to drink? She's like, coffee. She pours me a cup of coffee. And then I see her miming to the smoker outside. The smoker is, like, pointing at me and then miming to, like, write down my order. <laughs> the woman on the inside is shaking her head violently. No. Wow. They don't want you as a customer for some reason. Apparently. So, eventually the smoker comes in. What do you want? I order an omelet, hash brown smothered and covered, and a large order of bacon. She goes to cook it. Doesn't ask me what kind of toast I want or... Because I, I would usually... I always forget that they give you toast. Right. But when they say what kind of toast do you want, I would say wheat, no mm-hmm. butter. Mm-hmm. I do not like butter, or I do not like white bread. I'm uh, on both of those. Yeah. Uh, she did not ask. Uh, just went and cooked. Brought back the food. Omelette, underdone. Bacon, overdone. Not the correct order of it, either. And as I'm eating... There are gnats flying all around the uh, oh, wow the area. That's like a cartoon character of of a meal. Yeah. So I finish because I'm starving. Hadn't eaten the night before. Uh, I get up. They finally give me my bill after I've been waiting. After I finished eating, they finally give me my bill. Uh, I go up to pay. Uh, she rings it up. She looks at where I was sitting to see if I had left a tip. Because my bill is like nine fifty something. Uh, I pay with a 20. So obviously, you know, she's it's either give me a 10 and change oh, right. or give me smaller bills so you can have so I can leave a tip. Right, right. right. So she looks to see that I was going to leave it t- uh, to see if I left a tip. At this point, my plan was. She would give me the 10 and the change, and I would leave the change. Right. Because bad service. Right. Right. She looks and makes my decision for me as she starts pulling out a five and five ones. I'm not going to leave jack shit. (laughs) Right. So she hands me the bills and the change. I put it in my pocket and say, thank you, and walk out. (laughs) Because fuck those people. They, they seem rude. Yeah, a little bit. That seems rude. Yeah. And then, later on, uh, at lunchtime, I go to get lunch, I get a sandwich. And uh, not necessarily rude, but I would like to suggest that if you're fucking working any place, and I know it's going to be a busy lunch shift, lots of people are going to come in and order you around, but don't fucking take a hit of the bong right before that shift oh, starts. Yeah. yeah. Because I walk in, and the guy is just standing there, just staring at me. Baking. And finally, can I help you? I say I would like turkey club, extra tomato. What? (laughs) (laughs) You You having some bad luck. You're having some bad luck with... What the fuck service. is wrong with customer service nowadays? It's at an all-time low. Well, everyone's poor and depressed, so they're either drunk or, uh, you know, they're just thinking about their horrible financial situation. I, You know, I hardly ever have bad service. I think I've always tipped. I mean, like, sometimes I'm like, I never refilled my drink or whatever. But, right. But, yeah, I never, like, get the, like, rude asshole type of servers. Do I... Do I draw that? To myself? I, don't know. I know. I know I'm an asshole. I know that, and, and I'm the first person to admit that. I am a major fucking dick. I get that. You're not a dick. You're not a dick. But does that mean that I necessarily have to draw that to me when I go out? I think you have a superpower. <sighs> like every time we've been to the theater, uh, <laughs> usually when we go out for dinner or lunch or something, it's it's, it's usually okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes a 12-year-old will insult your art skills, but... Right. Uh, other than that... But that's to be expected. All right. Why, right. why wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't... I don't... I don't... 
I don't know. Uh, Maybe it's the time, the place you go? I don't I, know. I guess. I don't know. Because I went to Waffle House just last yeah. Eve. Well, which Waffle House did you go to? The, uh, the one up here on Dorothy Lane. Okay, because I went to the one out by Moraine. So, I usually go to the one out on Dorothy Lane, and they're pretty good. Yeah. They're like, good. like uh... They, they they even got to like you know kind of recognize me after a while and then know what I wanted. Oh, so that's cool. And like the, occasionally I would get free shit. Even better. Yeah, but this place uh, I've been there twice because uh, my uh, well my coworker moved, uh, and so since he now lives fairly close to me, I go to the Waffle House that's closer to so where he lives. Right. Since uh, you know I don't really have to go out of my way anyway. Right. Might so well. right. <clears throat> But I think I may just start going back to the Dorothy Lane one again. I was going to say, I've been to that other Waffle House, but it's usually super late at night. Yeah. I've never been there in the morning. Well, don't, because they're awful. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've ever been to a Waffle House in the morning other than in South Carolina. Uh-huh. I ate breakfast there. Usually I go there at night. As you would, being a dirty hippie a dirty, stoner. A dirty hippie stoner. I, I, yeah, we just get out of Rocky Horror. We get done uh, <laughs> doing blow off of the neighbor's dog, and then we go out to Waffle House. Right, right. No, I do love Waffle House, but I like breakfast at night. And if I'm eating breakfast in the morning, I usually go to Christopher's because I hardly ever get to eat breakfast at Christopher's. Understandable. Darn good. I uh, I do love a breakfast at night though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love a Perkins, a Bob Evans. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's weird breakfast at lunch. I'm like I'm not yeah. excited about like not in the middle but of the day. But breakfast for dinner is awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What is that? What is I don't it? know. Moons over Miami. <laughs> That's what it is. <clears throat> I think it is all the all the like high school Denny's action because uh, we'd always go there late at night and we're like wow you can get breakfast here. Right. I never eat breakfast other than you know like. A uh, pop tart, or, right? Or, 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 yeah, like a Hostess cupcake. <laughs> yeah, well, then, you know, that's the thing. Like, I, I never eat breakfast in the mornings. Like, you know, I'm, I'm I, I try to sleep as much as I possibly can. So, like, you know, basically, I'm just racing around trying to get to work. You know, right. at a not terribly late time. You know, so yeah, I, I always skip breakfast. I, and, I'm I'm a breakfast eater. I get up an hour and a half before I have to be at work every day, and I live like ten minutes from my work. Yeah, I can't do that. I like get up and uh, walk my dog and cook some eggs and like usually read a comic. Or lately, you loaned me this Batman uh, animated series. I've watched yeah. uh, an episode like just about every day when I eat breakfast lately. That's cool. Uh, I uh, yeah, I get up at like uh, five forty-five, which is like the absolute. Minimal time that I can get up at. Wow, that to be a working sucks. Time. Yeah. That sucks. Uh, it's too early for me. Yeah, I'm a nine o'clock kind of riser. Yeah, uh, like in the weekends when I when I sleep in late, I, I usually get up around. Uh, well, it depends on how late I, w- I was up, like the previous night. But like, uh, like like we're gonna have drawing night tomorrow night, so we'll probably be up to like two or three in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'll probably sleep to like. You know, eleven or noon on Saturday, right? But like, you know, if we didn't have drawing night, and I would just be here by myself. You know, I'd probably go to bed at like eleven and then get up at like ten. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this must be terribly exciting for our, our listeners. Yeah. They're like, they're like, you guys like to eat breakfast at night. Got it. Okay. Yeah. You like to sleep, sleep a certain in. amount of yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. This is amazing. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, when I wash my hair, I do rinse and repeat. Do you? Yeah. Do you do? You do. Uh, I also have like a like a. Do you wash your hair at the very beginning or the very end of the shower? Uh, I wash my hair first, mm-hmm. but I leave it in. Ooh. And then I soap up. Really. Rinse, and then wash my hair again. Oh wow! I always do it all at the very end, huh? the whole thing. Huh? And I mean, I, I masturbate at the very very end, right. like after I totally cleanse well, myself. I'm, Doing that throughout the whole time, yeah. right? Okay, right, right. Wow. yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> no, I, I, I might have to start doing the whole uh, lather and then shower, right? And then rinse and repeat. Yeah, that's a good idea. But I also use a shampoo with a conditioner in it, mm. and the conditioner is usually what you need to leave in. Oh, uh, I never, never, never don't use the conditioner. conditioner. I don't yeah. use the conditioner. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Oh. One of us should bring up food again. Uh Oh, yeah. So uh, Uh, we we ate burritos. 
I had a chicken burrito. Yeah. Oh, wow. Did you get the bird flu? Oh, maybe. Really? Because that ties in to the book that we read. That's right. I had a whole joke that I planned the, really? that uh, totally didn't happen at all. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, like, just want to do it now? Uh, okay, well, but we're going to have to start the show over here. Uh, just tell me something to say to play off of. Uh, we're, we're just going to start the show over Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. All right. Welcome to Gutter Trash, episode 57. My name is Eric. Blah, 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 blah. I'm Jason. You know, because I just saw this creepy ghost in the hallway. Not literally started over. Oh, okay. Like, started over oh. from, like, you know, how we would normally do it. Okay, I think, man. Not with like, creepy ghosts. I think, man, like, just redo. No, no. Okay. okay. Okay, here we go. Hey. Right. Welcome to Gutter Trash, episode 57. My name is Eric. And I'm Jason. And this episode, we are reviewing Chew. But not the critically acclaimed image comic by John Lehman and Rob Guillory. No! We went out and we bought a bunch of chewing tobacco. Yeah. A good cross-section. We've been chewing for a week. <laughs> recorded our thoughts. Talking about it. This is a new direction for the show. Spitting it in the Mountain Dew bottles. Fuck yeah. Damn straight. I'm, I'm really glad you did that. We did we read that. Are you sure? <laughs> I kind of fell flat. I, uh, no, it, was, it was bigger in my head. It was all right. It, it was, was okay. Right. It wasn't bad. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe built up. Maybe. 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 Yeah. I think if, if I would have been able to just do it right. and, you know, not you have, like, you know, a haunting, you know, in the middle of right. the show, yeah. probably would have gone off a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Yes, uh, we had some paranormal activity. <laughs> But, uh... So, yeah. One thing, one thing that wasn't haunted was this book. Oh! Doesn't make any sense. No. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. We read Chew by John Lemon and Rob Guillory. Yes. From Image Comics. Another Image book. Who would have thought? I keep liking Image books. Oh, so you liked this I one. I did like this one. Wow. Yeah. I didn't. You didn't? No, I actually, I really did. Okay. <laughs> I was like, that's surprising. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I, I can see you doing this book. Like this, <laughs> like this is very like your style of like humor and action. You know, yeah, like put together. Well, thank you. Yeah. I guess yeah. I think that's a compliment. Well, I meant it as one. All right. Who the fuck knows what it came out as? Well, maybe a compliment to me, but an insult to John Layman. <laughs> Is he the guy they always talk about in his terms, you know? Like, Layman terms? Right, yeah. Is it, this is who they're That's the guy. Okay. That is the guy. Ah, the go-to man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I know. Yeah, he's partially retarded. That's too bad. Yeah. Still writes a decent Cause, story. Because you have to simplify everything for, for Layman's right. terms. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I bet I bet Guillory always makes that joke when they're when he's like, hey, hey like I'm, I did some sketch, but you know, the layman might not understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's and really that's cool. why he's not drawing the book anymore. Oh, really? Did he get canned? <laughs> oh. oh, they picked up, uh, is Charlie Adler doing it again? <laughs> You're an ass. Because <laughs> uh, if he is, this is the, this is where I hop off the train. The choo-choo train. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. That, was, that, was, that was better than your chow joke. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Oh. Uh, I can admit when I'm bad. <laughs> well, they... Okay, speaking of bad jokes, they call it Taster's Choice. That's pretty. That's pretty funny. Though. Eh, it's all right. Yeah. That's the name of the, the storyline. The, yeah, the the trade paperback, if you will, collecting the first five issues for a measly ten bucks. Ten bucks. That's why awesome. well, I bought it. Yeah, that is awesome. Well, that and I wanted to read it anyway. But yeah, the ten buck price didn't hurt. Or seven fifty if you buy it at Mavericks Cars and Comics, located at twenty three twelve East North Atlanta, the Woodland Plaza in Kettering, Ohio. Where is that again? <laughs> Mavericks Cards and Comics, the one that located at 2312 East Northern Line and Ketter at the Woodland Plaza, where trade paperbacks and hardcovers are always 25% off, including Absolute Editions and Manga. Shout out to Mavericks. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. We need the business. Wow. <laughs> La- last, last week, seriously, is uh, the worst week of sales we've had in the last 15 years. Wow. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. People aren't, uh, people aren't buying shit. Uh, what is going on? Come on, people. Support your economy. Support yeah. the local businesses. Dig up your uh, coffee cans full of ones in the backyard and yeah. take it down to the five and dime and buy some socks. Cause it probably doesn't really help that we only have like three listeners that actually shop there. <laughs> That's true. And two of them are us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, and you get a trade. I just steal everything. And return it. Fuck that place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So I've never heard of either one of these uh, people, John Lehman or Rob Guillory. Guillory? Guillory? Guillory. I'm going to say Guillory. Guillory? Yeah. Okay. Uh, John Lehman is a former editor at Wildstorm. He edited Planetary. The Star comic with uh, the cartoon? Kid Not Planetary. Okay. Planetary. The special bonus episodes that we're recording oh, yeah. throughout the winter. That's right. Reviewing Warren Ellis and John Cassidy's epic comic Planetary, edited by John Lehman, who wrote Chew. <laughs> Which one are we reviewing again? Planetary. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> We're not. Yeah. Scotland, PA. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, let's just let's do my brain is hanging upside down. Again. That was my favorite. Brotherhood of the Wolf was a really long movie. Yes, it was. No werewolves. Oh, this could be like one of those best of Christmas. Jeff Loeb. <laughs> we said we weren't going to say it. You said you weren't going to say it. Anymore. <laughs> you know, like those episodes of uh, Alf where like right. it's a Christmas episode it's a clip episode. Yeah, we should do one of those. Yeah, I'd have to put that together. No, we could just redo it all. We, oh, okay. Just, okay. No one, no one. Will well, remember. we just did. Okay, okay, yeah. we did it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Alf, man, wasn't, wasn't Alf a great show? No. Gosh. I watched it recently. Oh, I love it. Okay, well, let's not talk about that. Let's actually talk about the comic we're okay. here to review. Chew. Chew. Volume <laughs> 1. John Chew. Lehman, Rob Guillory. Chosen by you. Had Chosen you, by me. Had you read it before no, you chose it? Okay. not at all. Okay. I chose it because I bought it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't read... Hardly any new comics in like uh, two months, so really? uh, you know, it was kind of a ploy to just read something. I, I usually do that too because right. I'm, I'm really bad about reading stuff, uh, unless it's by Chris Ware or Jeffrey Ron or Kerry McNinch. Right. And uh, and I, I have a stack. Uh, who is that again? Who? What? Which one? Chris Ware. Chris Ware. Jeffrey Brown. Kerry McNinch. Yeah, Chris Ware. Chris Ware. Chris Ware. I, I, I'm <laughs> unfamiliar. Anyway, uh, so yeah, chew. Number one, mm, volume one, volume one. So, uh, yeah, I guess we should talk about it. It's uh, a, we we both enjoyed it as a. It's a funny. It's, it's very funny, comedic, but it's not like slapstick. It's a little slapstick, but I mean, it's not okay. It, it has slapstick in it, but it's not like nonstop just hilarity. Right. Like right. there's actually a story where you're like, "Ooh, what's happening? Who's this character?" Right. You know, right. like you know, as opposed to like a Three Stooges episode, you you know, where they're FDA agents, you would never be like, "What's Larry gonna do in that next scene?" Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, usually it's just he gets slapped. Yeah, he gets slapped, or he does slap him. He right. Does right. Like, Larry actually, he does get slapped more than. he does the slapping, yeah. but... Yeah, Moe's more of a slapper. Moe's the definite uh, dom. He's the dom. Yeah. Uh, Curly is definitely the sub. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and then Larry is kind of in the middle there. Yeah. yeah. He, he's, uh, But he's definitely not the dom, though. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his hair's cool. Oh, yeah. His hair dominates the scene. Fuck yeah. But that's about it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like we are horrible at reviewing anything, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're like, a uh, attention deficit order disorder reviews. Like, um, in this episode, we're going to review, are those new shoes? <laughs> you know, we're, we're just not good at it. Actually, yeah, they are. Are they? Yeah. Nice. I just got them uh, for, well, I bought them for the Christmas party at work. Right. Because yeah, we needed to have, like, a hard black uh, shoe, you know, like a, something that I could, something I could wear, you know, like, uh, casually, but at the same time I could disguise as a, as, a, as a formal shoe. Comfy yet stylish. Right, right, right. Mm. Yeah. I need some winter shoes because all I have are these Chuck Taylors. Right. And if I get in two inches of snow, I'm going to be... Well, you're fucked. I'm frozen yeah. to... Apparently it's supposed to snow tomorrow. Not two inches though, right? Uh, an inch hmm? is what I hear. I'll have to stay inside all day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, me too, but uh, unfortunately that's going to be inside at work, which is far away. Hmm. hmm. And that is how you successfully derail anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this has been... <laughs> An episode of our show. Um, I didn't realize that we were making a joke. I thought we were really talking about shoes. I'm serious. I forgot that we were not just like talking about shoes. Okay. Uh, shoes rhymes with shoes. Yeah. 
Um, that was horrible. Yes, it was. Okay, okay. Here's one thing I, I thought of when I first heard the concept of this because there was a uh, there was like a preview of this and everybody got all the buzz about it. It was in like Walking Dead or something, right? Uh, I suppose. And people were talking about it, so I, I like read the review or the uh, the preview, the preview, and I was like, okay, cool. But it, it kind of reminds me of. I mean, the first thing I thought of was pushing daisies for some mm-hmm. reason. Like, it has that similar kind of... Similar. You know. A little darker. Yeah. Yeah, a little darker. A little, a little lot darker. Yeah. Uh, more cannibalism lot, than yeah. uh, an average they, episode of Push and Daisies. They turned up the cannibalism notch. Yeah. yeah. The knob. Um, notch. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, but it really does remind me of that, especially, like, there's some narration, especially at the beginning of the fifth and final part of the book here. Um it even like sort of has the same exact feel where you see like clips that are happening, uh-huh. and then like you see like the last thing and the narrator who we don't know who the narrator is right. is like you know meets you know you know twenty four hours have been passed and it just reminded me a lot. I could just like hear that narrator's voice even. I, I can see what you're what you're trying to say. I mean, I'm not insulting it. Oh, I know you're not. It, it's just like I, I know you enjoy a pushing daisies. Yeah, I do, I, but. It, I mean, I wouldn't say derivative, but I would say, like... Similar in of, feel, yeah. or uh, thematically similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, if you like Pushing Daisies, I think you would like this. Yeah. As long as you also like, you know, uh, Mountain of the Cannibal God. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> it's like Pushing Daisies and Mountain of the Cannibal God mixed yeah. together. Uh, it's also uh, uh, just a touch of noir. Yeah, yeah, I'd say uh, so. Uh... Okay, for for the people who have not heard of this, uh, basically it's the story of a cop by the name of Tony Chu, C H U. He's Asian. He is Asian. Uh, a very rare thing in uh, uh, any comics. major form of entertainment. Yeah, that's true. At least, uh, um, except for uh, uh, like Ninja baseball. Assassin. Yeah. Okay. What? There's a lot of a lot of baseball players. A lot of Asian baseball players coming up. Uh, there's like three. Oh, there's like forty. There's like three. I can't name any of them, so I can't prove my point. Because you can't pronounce them. But I work at Mavericks, and I see, like, Asian baseball players. It's the same guy. You're just racist. <laughs> I'm just, like, no, this guy is different. Guy uh, he's is been different. traded from team to team. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. I swear there's, like, eight Asian pitchers. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, anyway, but no, I was, I, was going, I was going to say that, uh, and I don't really consider baseball entertainment. Really? It's the American pastime. Yeah. I like the Cubs, but uh, I'm fully willing to admit that baseball has got to be the second most boring sport on the face of the planet. Don't want golf. Golf yeah, is yeah. the first day. Yeah, golf is a sleeper. Yeah, yeah, it is. I like baseball, though. We're getting off track again, yeah. and I'm, I'm trying to keep us on track okay. by talking about Asian Americans okay. and their roles in entertainment. Right. Right. Uh, and that uh, usually... When they are presented as a lead role, they're also a martial arts expert or a doctor or someone really, really smart. Right. And it's just kind of an average Joe. just happens to be a cop. Yeah. Just and he also happens to have mutant powers. He's a cybopath. Or a chibopath. Chibopath? I don't know. Cibopath? I don't know. C-I-B-O-path. Cybopath. Ah, eh, whatever. Whatever. Who knows? But uh, he has the ability to uh, sort of uh, divine the the history of anything that he eats, like its motivations, intentions, and experiences actions. and actions. Yes, including it, it, as an examples uh, like apples. He can tell what pesticides were put on the apples, and right? Where what tree it came from, and exactly. who, who picked it. Or if he eats a piece of a corpse, he can tell what happened to that corpse. Exactly. Now, he generally doesn't... Uh, well, the only food that he can eat that doesn't happen uh, yeah. is beets. Beets, yeah. Uh, I wonder why. I don't know. Well, because beets are disgusting. Maybe that's why. That could be why. I'm not uh, a huge fan. I'll eat them, but... Yeah. Not a fan at all. So anyway, this world that he lives in, uh, the bird flu has basically uh, become such a threat that the government has banned poultry. Yeah. And instead of... Uh, basically, the world is set up as a Prohibition-era <laughs> sort of America, but instead of alcohol speakeasies... Uh, there's, like, chicken, chicken speakeasies. Chicken speakeasies. Yeah. 
Which is pretty. It's pretty pretty great concept. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, like I don't even eat meat, but if there was a chicken speakeasy, I'd go to one. I'd go. Yeah. I'd be like, give me a, <laughs> a six nuggets, some barbecue <laughs> sauce. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I would. I really would. That's how lame I am. I would. Yeah. Eat, I would eat meat just because like it was. Illegal. It was illegal because yeah, I'm not supposed to. Because yeah. you're an outlaw. Yeah. yeah. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a bad boy. Yeah. I'm a troublemaker. You really are. That's why all the ladies love you. I push over cows. Shit like that, man. I've seen you toilet paper houses. You. I did steal a baby Jesus uh, from a Christmas display several years ago. With oh, I thought you were going to say like yesterday. No. No. <laughs> I mean, it's embarrassing that it was only a few years ago. It was like right, right. seven years ago. It should have been like 12, right, 15 right. years ago. But anyway. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, Tony and his partner are cops. They're investigating a uh, sort of a drug lord, kingpin kind of guy. They catch him going into a chicken speakeasy, yeah. which uh, turns out that they are interrupting an FDA investigation, mm-hmm. Federal Food and Drug Administration, who are now basically the top cops in this world. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, in order to keep Tony and his partner quiet, they offer... To let Tony and his partner have a chicken dinner at this speakeasy, federally funded and approved. Yeah. Uh, his partner is kind of a bent cop, so he, he takes it. Tony is strictly by the book, and of course, he's got the whole, you know, food thing going right. on. He, he, doesn't he, want he doesn't want to yeah. participate. Uh, he orders the lightest thing they have on the menu, which is chicken soup, which has uh, a drop of blood from the cook in it. <laughs> Which, the cook is a serial killer, <laughs> and Tony gets a flash of this. They chase him down. The guy kills himself, <laughs> and in order to figure out where all the bodies are, how many victims there were, Tony starts eating his face. Yeah, and thus begins the story. It's 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 a very good opener. It is a it, great opener. It sort of lets you know exactly what you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, basically, Tony gets recruited by the FDA. Uh, he is only one of three cheapopaths, sebopaths so, in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll call them sebopaths. Yeah, we, we can't fuck that up. Yeah. Food psychic. Oh, I like that. <laughs> wow, they could infuse the food network and the psychic network. Oh, wow. Have the food psychic there, network. There we go. Wow. I don't think there is a psychic network, but there we go. Remember, what was her name? Uh, Mrs. You're thinking of Psychic Friends Network. Oh, no, what was that lady? She was like, Cleo. Yes, man. Hello, yeah, man. Yeah, Cleo. 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 Oh, yeah. can you imagine her like cooking up uh, some food, too? Well, she probably could cook, because right. she definitely couldn't read minds, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so Tony becomes a member of the FDA. Him and his partner, his new partner on the FDA, is another food psychic. <laughs> Mason. Mason. Easily my favorite character in the book. He is a great character. Yeah. And uh, shady. But uh, we don't fully know why until towards the end. He's uh, got a great vocabulary. He does, indeed. Uh, there's also some of like the stereotypical sort of cop things, like uh, his uh, his new boss at the FDA is... Right. Like the kind of guy you'd see in a Lethal Weapon movie. Right, or like Beverly Hills Cop. Or- right. But, like, Tony is totally not, you know, the uh, the Mel Gibson or Eddie Murphy character. He is so fucking straight-laced that it's almost undeserving how he's treated. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> he's not, like, doing the, the Mel Gibson kind of hijinks. Or right. Whatever. You're pointing something. Uh, I was going to say, the, uh, Mr. Appleby or Crabtree, whatever his name is. Uh, Appleby. He yeah. kind of reminds me of Barney Miller a little bit. Uh... Especially yeah, right there. if he had a mustache, definitely. Yeah. yeah, he has a little bit of a mustache, like you know this little. Oh uh, yeah, like a little tiny mustache. That's like a it's like a John Waters billion uh, villains type, you know, uh, <laughs> tying the female to the train track yeah, kind of villain, like, yes. like swirling the, the, yeah, the yeah. tip of their mustache. <laughs> yeah, good characters all all through. Oh yeah, and uh. Okay, so you're still talking about this. No. I'm- and and and, uh, and I love that his love interest is a food critic. That's perfect. Yeah. He uh, he falls in love with uh, this woman who uh, has the ability to write 
such detailed reviews of food that it's almost as if you, the reader, can taste them. Yeah, like literally. Literally. Like people get sick if she gives it a bad review. And- she, uh, yeah, she starts reviewing like D level restaurants just for the fun of it. <laughs> yeah. And describing the gross food that these places serve. Which causes the entire city to become sick and under FDA investigation. Yeah, that that whole scene, that whole that issue, that reminded me of a Chuck Palahniuk story. Like it seems like yeah, he could yeah, 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 very much so. Wow, yeah, yeah. good uh, good comparison, like choke or something. Yeah, there, you know. but uh, he falls in love with her because her writing allows Tony to taste food without having without the, having the psychic flashes. Perfect. Yeah, perfect matchup. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very well written. Yeah, very well. Every chapter standalone. Uh, and while I guess if uh, we had been reading this monthly, the opening pages of each issue like give like a uh, like a recap. Uh, not so much a recap, but just like uh, this is the characters, this is the story. Okay, you know, like but then like a slightly different variation. Which, again, if we had read it monthly, I'm sure it would have been awesome, but reading it in a trade, I don't think worked for it very well. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, it was very episodic. Like, it almost was like a... Uh, it reminded me of a TV show, because, yeah, 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 where it's like, you know, Tony and Chu can do this, and here's how the story ends. Right, it's right, very, right. Yeah, like you said, every everyone's self-contained, but yeah. built into something bigger. Yeah, there is definitely a story happening. That uh, we we have yet to see the full thing going on, like such as, Super- huh? Oh, yeah. like Super- there's a conspiracy that's uh, sort of revealed uh, that's going on. Uh, Tony's got a family that uh, we are made aware of. Uh, one of who was a famous TV chef, yeah, who started railing against the uh, chicken conspiracy <laughs> oh, live on air, oh, live on air, held down. <laughs> and then someone who he visits in the hospital, we don't even know who that is. Oh no, that's his uh, partner. Oh, that's his partner? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the, the opening chapter, his partner gets hit in the face with an axe. I didn't realize that was him, though. No. Yeah, that okay. was him. Yeah. He's all bandaged up. Yep. Okay. I thought maybe it was like his mom or something. No, no. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I got to talk about the art. Yeah. I think the art is fucking great. Yeah. It's so stylistic. Yeah. In, like, a, such a good way. Uh, it's super cartoony. But super dirty and gritty. Yeah, it's amazing. It is. It is. It doesn't really look like anybody else's art that I can yeah. think of. Uh, I, I, you didn't read it, I don't think, but uh, it sort of reminded me of the art in uh, Mysterious: The Unfathomable. Yeah, I didn't read that. Yeah, one. very similar. Not similar styles, but similar leanings. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, pardon. Uh. But but uh, it it looks very animation. Yeah, like, like I could just see it in motion. Yeah, but but also very smudgy. Uh, like there's just like a some splatter and some grit. I love it. Yeah, I think That's it's excellent. great. Yeah, he's an excellent artist, Rob Guillory, or however you say, it. or however. <laughs> And the color is awesome, too. Okay, let's talk negative about this book. Uh, Fucking have things I can pronounce. What? <laughs> like the, the artist's like name? Like the artist's name and whatever the fuck it is that he does when yeah. he eats and <laughs> gets flashes. I like I like how they're obviously... They obviously want to make this into a movie with with all the... Uh, there's a there's a I mean like I just said that guy sort of looks like uh, Hal Linden but I don't think they're gonna try to get Hal Linden. To He's fight. like ninety years old. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously Sam Jackson and William H Macy are in this book. Are they? Oh yeah, uh, Caesar the uh, the the guy that works for uh, the the evil like uh, oh where are we gonna I gotta find it Mr Montor- Monterey or something uh, I, don't, I don't know oh where is he he comes in and uh. I was just looking at the page right before I, right before I mentioned it. That's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, Evan Pepper, the guy that get the food critic, right, or the, the FDA investigator, or whatever. No, he's uh, not a food critic. Health uh, inspector. Health inspector. Yeah, he he looks exactly like William H Macy. Uh, <laughs> I didn't notice. And um, yeah. Look, and, uh, wow. Okay. Yes, he does. <laughs> he does indeed. Uh, let's see. And I mean, like Sam Jackson. Sort of has a yeah. style now after Pulp Fiction, where a lot of people emulate it. So maybe, 
maybe they didn't really mean for it to look like Sam Jackson. Maybe I'm just picking up on the yeah. whole style thing, but. Well, okay. Here's like like you point out that you know that definitely did look like a William H Macy, mm. but not in that creepy Brian Hitch, Greg Land sort of way. Yeah, like a character. Yeah, like does not look like Sam Jackson to you, like from especially from Pulp Fiction. It looks like the character from Pulp Ju- Fiction. It looks like more like Jules. From, the- yeah, but it doesn't look like yeah. Sam Jackson. Yeah, okay, gotcha. But yeah, I, yeah, the art is amazing. Very caricaturish. Yeah, uh, like everything's so animated and like. There, it looks like it's moving. Yeah, it's lively. It's it's uh, got a lot of character in it. Mm-hmm. It's great. Very good storyteller. Yeah. The artist. He knows how to. He knows what to put in the panels. Yep. Yeah. Very good. I like it a lot. I'm gonna. Hopefully, uh, you'll buy the second trade, and I'll read that too. All right. <laughs> well, I may start picking it up monthly. I don't oh, know. Really? I picked up issue six. Uh, well, I didn't pick it up, but uh, it's in my file. Is that the latest one? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. As I said, yeah. issue six came out the same week as the trade. Wow. I bought the trade and I put issue six aside just in case I liked the trade. And you did. And I did. So I guess I should probably buy issue six. Yeah, because the second trade, I mean, if they're going it, to It's not going to be ten bucks. Yeah, it'll be like yeah. fifteen per right, right. That's how they do it over there. That's It's like they give you the first taste real cheap. Yeah. Get you hooked. Jack up the price. Mm-hmm. And then next thing you know, you're... Give them blowjobs and alleys for twenty dollars, so you can buy a new trade. Yeah, like I just, I just need a new comic. Man. I just need it. Slurp. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> we have uh, we've gotten really bad at uh, talking about things that we review. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, I don't know. We were good at it at one time, you're supposing. Uh, better than we have been? Yeah. And did we take it more seriously, maybe? Like, like back when... No. Like, the Marion Henley one, we were, like, pretty serious about that. Well, we we were definitely trying to be serious at that point, but we were... I was also editing, so... Oh, yeah, All, like, the extra crap that we talked about, I would always, like, cut out. And that one made us cry. Maybe we need to read a book that'll make us cry. Uh, no, I don't... It's... I just, it's like, uh, I don't know, like with Scotland PA, even though maybe that wasn't exactly worth talking about so much, mm-hmm. but like, uh, I just feel like with that episode and this episode, it's like we focused too much on just, uh, all the other crap that we talk about and not the actual book. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in fairness, I mean, there's, it, it, there's not a lot to it. I it mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's a thin trade. It's mostly a fun, like, yeah, romp. it's, it's, it's a like fun a romp. romp. Yeah. I mean, it gets you entertained. It's cheap. Yeah. It's well written and expertly drawn. Yeah. I mean, oh, I don't feel like we could really go too much. Too much, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean it's a quality piece of merchandise that's not going to change your life, but it's it's definitely a solid piece of value, entertainment value. Yeah. You know? and, okay, yeah, and like the 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 hook, the gimmick of the book itself. Uh, I think is enough to draw people in, yeah. and everything else follows through on it, makes it a solid read, instead yeah. of just being, well, that sounds really interesting, but it's oh, awful. Yeah, how many times do you hear about a comic, you're like, oh, that's a neat concept, and you read it, and you're like, man, that just that's all they have right, is that right. one concept. Yeah. This is, there's like 20 things that are yeah, cool yeah. about it, you know, like like like, I, like you said, the, uh, the food reviewer, and uh, just like the style of the art, I mean, just right, all kind, right. there's just a bunch of sweet things, like the splash page of vomit here. I mean, I mean, it's all it's fun. It's really fun. It's yeah, a very fun comment. All right, fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, highly recommended. Yes. Chew, yes. buy it, read it. I just reordered a couple copies at the store. So Sweet. If you're in the Dayton area, we have them. Excellent. Where was that again? Or we will on Wednesday. We don't have them yet. This Wednesday? Yeah. Well, by the time this airs, we'll have them. Wait. So the thirtieth. Uh, no, this the one's... 23rd, 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 that's yeah. right, because there's no comics coming out on the 30th. Except for... Except for local independent books. Yeah, and and an issue of Green Lantern, or Green Lantern yeah. Because, really? I thought it was a Marvel book that was coming out. Well, they're both being assholes, because Marvel actually had a free book that we were supposed to give away, uh-huh. but I just didn't order it, because I was like, fuck them. Yeah. But, but then DC did this thing where they're like, we're going to send you Green Lantern number whatever... Uh, on the 23rd, but it's in a separate box, and you can't even open it or show the covers to anyone, And you, but you're allowed to sell it on the 30th. So they're, they're getting they're getting by that. They're sending it a week early, 
but it'll be the only new book. It'll be my my comic, Justin's comic, and Green Lantern will be the only three new books that week. You should totally sell the Green Lantern book the day you get it. We're not allowed. Says who? Uh, Are the cops going to get you? <laughs> we had to sign. We had to sign something saying where we won't sell it a week early. It yeah, actually. Who the fuck's going to know? <laughs> well. Well, if I Our s- five I, listeners? Well, I'll have to. Well, even if I'm going to sell them, I'll have to say, I, yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, you know. Right. But but it's funny because they sent us this email. Joe, is Joe going to turn you in? He could. I, I mean, he's it. a Green Lantern guy, but still. He's come more on. of a Flash guy. Oh, well, yeah. still, he's a nerdy DC guy. I'm sure. He's going to hear this. I'm sure some will leak out. But whatever. <laughs> but, it, but they actually made us sign something that says, you know, you will not. Uh, review or post online or loan out or allow to be stolen or sell and I was like wait wait what how can you <laughs> yeah. not allow to be stolen I know I even like like the next time I was talking to Diamond I was like I was like I was like was, I was, like, was that like a joke in there about not allowed to be stolen they're like I didn't even catch that and he laughed about it too but it's like <laughs> it's like they're really covering all their bases oh yeah but yeah. We'll just say that all the copies were stolen, and that somehow you got three dollars each for them. But yeah, still, yeah, it was a, it was like a Robin Hood thing. He left, yeah, he left a basket of money for the poor. Us, <laughs> right? Yeah, because <laughs> we're, we're fucking poor, right? Destitute. I get it. Okay. Yeah. So Green Lantern, Green Lantern, it's a great comic. Go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but not on the twenty third. Yeah, but on, on the thirtieth. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's take a break. Okie doke. All right. Welcome back to Gutter Trash. Howdy, 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 howdy. Boom. Boom, sir. Fuck yeah. Uh, so how are, how are you? How am Did I? Did you enjoy the break? 
I did enjoy the break. Get that, that. Did you see a ghost? I did. <laughs> I saw a ghost that made me act drunk. Yeah. The drunken ghost of of uh, Sally Forth. No, I don't know. Uh, Estelle Getty. Uh, fuck, I don't know. B. Arthur. Oh, yeah. Is he still Getty? He's still alive. Uh, no, she's dead. Okay. Yeah. So there, uh, there's only two golden girls left. Oh, wow. Ruth McClanahan. And Betty White. Wow. Yep. They're both fine actresses, actually. Yes, they are. I like both of them. Yeah. Uh, I'm enjoying myself some uh, Lipton green tea with citrus. Uh, mm, mm, yeah. Well, you can fuck yourself if that's how you feel. <laughs> uh, otherwise, no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I just, I'm not a fan. I like the green tea, but not the citrus green tea. I don't know why. I don't know either. But, but yeah, I'm having a uh, my my shitty day turned uh, upward as uh, just as we started the the show prep. Oh, did you sell all those Barbies on eBay? I did. How much did they go for? A dollar each. Wow, that's four hundred dollars. I know. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Now I can buy things for Christmas for people. That's sweet. Yeah. It was a sacrifice, but, you know, at the same time... He kept all the Malibu stasis. Well, of course. Yeah, okay. But, uh, you know, I just felt that uh, I'm a giver. Right. And as much as it pained me to do so, I did have to sell those barbers. So, all right. Yeah. But like you said, I kept the Malibu stasis, and so it's it's bittersweet. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. And, and most of them aren't carded anymore because you've been taking them out for the bath. You know. Well, I play with them, of right. course. Right. Right. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do with toys. Oh, I know. I play know. with them. Oh, I know. Right. <sighs> so, yeah, anything else exciting other than that? Uh, nothing I'm ready to talk about yet. Okay. But uh, looking upwards for uh, the world of Eric. I, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. yeah. Glad to hear it. Thank you. I, I think everyone... Uh, I think if you smile, uh, the world smiles back. That's always been my motto. Oh, wow. That's a great motto. I'm going to put that on a cup and become a millionaire. I think, uh, I think something like, oh, man. It's like I was eating a burrito recently, mm-hmm. and like that phrase occurred to me as I really? was eating it. Like, not uh, like, like, uh, spelled out uh, as such. But it just sort of like was a feeling that right. I had, like just as I was eating this burrito. Huh. It was a great burrito, right? Guaranteed, uh, great burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I like their uh, symbol too. We're talking about, of course, hothead burritos. You <laughs> ruined the illusion. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> uh, I like, they have Wilson from Castaway as their <laughs> as their mascot. <laughs> it's like, if you're ever alone on a desert island and you're going crazy. <laughs> Eat some sand and pretend like it's a hothead burrito, baby. That's what it says on the bottom of the cup. Or you can spear a fish in mid-swim and make a fish burrito. If you've just lost 40 pounds, and we'll pause on you to make it <laughs> evident that you've lost 40 pounds. Mm. I think he lost like 80 pounds or something, didn't he? I don't think so. I think you're thinking of Christian Bale and The Machinist. Machinist. Ah, excellent film. Great film that kind of ended poorly. But great film nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, speaking of great films. Speaking of great films. Yeah. Uh, I watched one over the weekend. Murder Party. Murder Party. Everyone should go see Murder Party. I, I'll see it eventually. You should. It's good. I even uh, recommended it to our friend Matt Brassfield. Because mm-hmm. I said, hey, Matt, I saw this movie that totally reminded me of you. The entire time I was watching it. Because you always want to have a party and murder Matt. I do. Yeah. yeah sometimes I come close. And he had he not had not seen it. That's and, yeah, he'd never heard of it. it seems but, like uh, a, up his alley. It definitely does seem up his alley, and it definitely seems like the type of movie that I think with uh, a bigger budget and some uh, refined skill, the type of movie that he could make as well. All right. Well, that's cool. And there's a, a scene in the movie where the the lead character uh, buys some videotapes at a, at a video store uh like b horror movies uh and like they show like the spines of them and they totally remind me of some bloodline videos right uh well like one of them was even a werewolf movie called scare wolf <laughs> yeah <laughs> scare wolf <laughs> isn't that isn't that a character in one of their movies i don't know oh no Scarewolf. What am I thinking of? Isn't that, I think it's a Pez dispenser. <laughs> I think that's... 
I think the scare wolf is the pest dispenser I traded for all my tattoo work. Did I ever tell you about that? No. Uh, <laughs> when I was like 20 years old, I was getting a tattoo, and uh, and I always had like this is back when I ate candy a lot, and I had a pest dispenser in my pocket, and the guy that was giving me my tattoo had a necktie on, and I just like look over while he's he's zapping me with his gun, right? And uh, his love gun, his love gun. <laughs> And, and I see his, his necktie. I just figured out the song for this episode. Go ahead. <laughs> um, is it is it something sung by Tattoo from Fantasy Island? Yes. Um, and Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> oh, that'd be perfect. But, but his necktie was a Pez necktie. And, uh, like get, it distributed Pez? Yeah, that'd be awesome. I have seen a Pez watch, but <laughs> never an actual piece of cloth with candy inside. I don't know if that technology is here yet, but... Why not? James Cameron, make it happen, please. Fuck yeah. But, Stop making giant blue Smurf movies. Uh, 3D Smurf movies. Perfect. So anyway, I see it has a Pez necktie, and I'm like, oh, do you want a piece of Pez? And I like, pulled out my Pez dispenser. <laughs> And like here, all I hear is like you know he's like mm, it's like the guns going you know it sounds right. like a you've you've heard the yeah, yeah. tattoo and and he, all I hear is mm, and he just like I look over and he's like just staring at it when the gun has stopped and I was like uh like I thought maybe I offended him like you know he right. you know, he wears the necktie but hates the candy right something. it's ironic yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. like how dare you sir yeah I don't know if it was one of those things but but he was like oh my god. And uh, I was like, what? And he goes, that is the Scarewolf Pez Dispenser. And I was like, what? And uh, he was like, I've been looking for that Pez Dispenser for years. <laughs> and I I had it since I was like five years old. It was like, right. I think it was my brother's before me, and he passed it on to me. He's still alive. Right, right. But right. he like handed it over. Right, right. And and it was this when he, when he got too old for Pez. He outgrew it. Right. Yeah. That awkward phase where you think you don't like Pez anymore. Or or you or you just don't need this dispenser's like oh I just I just need it it's just candy just, I just do right, it right 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 yeah but no then you go too back. good for the dispenser yeah exactly right, right. I'm over it <laughs> but but uh and so I have this old Pez dispenser it has a rubber head first of all like because they all have like the hard plastic heads right right and you can take the head off and it's there's like a circle in the bottom of the head and there's a peg on the top of the Pez dispenser and I guess you could interchange heads back then. And it had no feet on the Pez dispenser; just it ends in a rectangle. So, like you know, sometimes they would fall over. Right. But, but it had a rubber head, so it didn't crack or anything. But apparently, they only made it one year for Halloween in the seventies, like late seventies. It was like this white and orange, uh, rubber-headed monster, and he was like smiling, and his teeth were hanging out. And it's called the Scare Wolf, and and he was like. I will give you three hundred dollars worth of tattoo work for that Pez dispenser, <laughs> and I was like, "Can I keep the candy?" But no, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I said that or not. But I said, "Sure." <laughs> so like, so I, I got like five more tattoos from him for free. Wow! For a Pez dispenser. Wow! Yeah, and you regret every single one of them. I I, I don't regret. I have ten tattoos. I have zero regret, but I swear. If I like, woke up one day and I just got in the shower and I noticed they were all gone, I'd be like, huh, oh well. <laughs> I would not care. I would not miss any of them <laughs> one iota. But yeah, I don't regret them. I just kind of forget that I have them. Do you regret giving away the Pez dispenser? More so than any of the tattoos. Right, right, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. That, uh, that's where I was trying to go with that. But <laughs> but I actually, I don't <clears throat> I don't eat Pez anymore. Like, I haven't ate it in years. Right. Because uh, of the meat. Because, yeah, there's bacon inside. I, right. didn't, I didn't know that when I was a kid. Yeah. Well, bacon is meat candy. It is. And that's why it's so, that's why Pez is so good. Yeah. So, yeah, Story of the Scare Wolf. Maybe the movie is about that. the Pez is Could be. That'd Could be very well be. I don't know. Yeah. That'd be a sweet, that'd be a sweet <laughs> film. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> So. so I guess I should just tell you what movie we're going to be watching. Yeah? Should we talk about... <laughs> okay. All right. What movie are we watching? Oh, the movie that we're going to watch is... Uh, I've mentioned it to you before. Uh, like, uh, I think I've even... Like, hey, have you seen this movie? Okay. Uh, you've done, as far as I know, you haven't. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. 
And uh, if I'd have had any foresight, I would have figured out who directed it or who the stars of it were. Uh, or what it's about. I know what it's about. Okay. <laughs> or the title of it. I know the title okay. of it. <laughs> but uh, it is a Korean movie. So, obviously, I, the names of the people involved are, are crazy gibberish. <laughs> and does, it, does it have some baseball players in it? Uh, yes, all of them. It's all about baseball players. Tom Selleck, is he in it? Uh, no, you're thinking of uh, was that was Mr. Baseball? Yeah, Mr. Baseball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no. He... <laughs> and that was Japanese. Oh, okay. Damn, I'm an Damn asshole. It. Yeah. No, uh, the movie we are watching is called Save the Green Planet. Okay. I have never seen it. Aha! Can't even remember what it's about. I think you may have told me. It's about a guy saving the green planet. Okay. We live on the green planet. I thought we lived on the blue planet. Uh, it's mostly green. It's blue. Really? Well, aqua. I guess it's aqua. mostly blue. Kind of aqua. Well, if you ever look at the ocean, it's really kind of brown. Yeah, it's getting that way. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Well, I remember the first time I ever saw a natural body of water. Uh, I was uh, like... Nine ten. It was in Chicago. We were having a family reunion. We went to uh, the lake, and uh, it's like I was excited because you know lake. You know I love water. I love swimming. Uh, back when I was active and right. did stuff. Yeah, you know. used to swim. <clears throat> uh, and then, like I got up and then I saw the water and it was green and brown. I was like, I don't want to go in that. There's like chunks of yellow th- and orange things floating, floating in the top. Well, no, but, uh, you know, it was like seaweed and shit. And, right. Yeah, you know, it was, of course, you know, I'm sure it was a lake in Chicago. I'm pretty sure there was other things in it that uh, I do drug, not want to know about. Drug paraphernalia. And, yeah. Uh, bodies. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so that that kind of, uh, yeah. Cool. I will say, though, the, the water in Puerto Rico is awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. The, the, the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean Sea. I've never been that, uh, The Pacific Ocean. Never seen the Pacific. Just the Atlantic. Or it's not the, it's not the Pacific, it's the Atlantic. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> My geography is fucked and wrong. Right. It is the Atlantic. Mm. And the Caribbean Sea. Yeah. Caribbean Sea is nice and calm. Really? Yeah. Not a lot of not, not a lot, lot of, of waves, crashing. not a lot of crashing. Uh I was out swimming on the the, Cur- the Caribbean side and uh almost pretty much just drifted out to sea. The water was that calm. You, really? like, you didn't even wow. know that you were being carried out. That's a peaceful way to go. Yeah. Uh the Atlantic side you pretty much could have just died on the shore. Really? Like a wave would come and just crack your head against a rock. Why is that, I wonder? Uh, well, New York. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Little Jersey, mostly. Mm. Fucking Jersey. Ah, is that where milk and cheese are from? Yes. I believe. I don't know. It has been years since I've read any of those. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh. Ooh. I don't think they have a graphic novel out. Oh, yes. Fun with milk and cheese. Oh, I don't want to read it. <laughs> would you veto? No. Okay. I doubt if I'd pick it either. Yeah. But whatever. I think we could uh, easily read an issue of Dork and uh, fill an episode. Oh, Um, Mike, you could read a page of Dork and fill an episode. (laughs) There's not since the Bible has a page been packed with so many words. And similar themes, actually, if you think about it. Sex, death, comedy. Comedy, indeed. Jesus was a comedian. That coin trick, stellar. Never gets old. Yeah, I never really like it when he, he went into the whole magic comedy thing. Uh, yeah. But it, it does rank a little bit higher than when he was guitar comic. Oh, yeah, or his puppets. Oh, God. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Fucking hell. <laughs> Lester. <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. Lester, the, the gay llama puppet. That was terrible. I'm so glad he could get over that. Uh, I thought you actually got that. Lester? Lester. Lester Banks? Lester the puppet. Uh, he was, he was a ventriloquist in like the late 70s, early 80s. His puppet was Lester. Really? Was that yeah. the guy with the was jalapeno a, on a stick? No, no, it was, uh, they, they, they were black gentlemen. Uh, the puppet and the ventriloquist. Uh-huh. And, uh, 
<laughs> never heard of it. Never heard of it. I'm, I'm not a. I'm not a puppet connoisseur. Mm. I don't mind. The- hey, do you want to go see the Harlem Globetrotters? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I love the Harlem Globetrotters. Ever since I uh, watched Scooby Doo when I was a kid, oh, I was a big fan. I saw them live once, uh, but just once. But they're playing uh, the Nutter Center. Uh, this is the Generals, uh, most likely. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think uh, I think there might be a different team now. Oh really? I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think they they might be playing against a different team. So do they have? Is it like Guar where they have the same characters? Like, is there a Metal Arc woman and a? No, uh, they, they they switch out the okay. characters you know as they age and, and rotate in new recruits and everything. Wow. So, uh, How long have they been doing that? Uh, 30, 40 years? Longer? You know, Guar is actually, this is their 25th anniversary. I know. <laughs> that's insane. Insane. They should have a team. No, that's, that's a ticket I would pay $50. Guar versus the Harlem Blue <laughs> <laughs> That would be perfect. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would be amazing. Like, they could play some ball, and then they would... Play like, some metal. Play some metal, yeah. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. Oh, fuck, that reminds me. All right, let's uh, wrap this up. Okay. So, um, planet, save the green planet. Save the green planet. Next uh, next episode, episode it's 58. A, it's, the, it's the Captain Power uh, straight-to-DVD movie, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Or Captain Planet. Fuck. Screwed that up. Captain oh. Power, yeah, that's right. That's the one with the, the, the guns. Lasers, that he, the laser tag, yeah. 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 Uh, not either one. Well, this has been an awful episode. Mm-hmm. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, hopefully the next one will be slightly better. But only slightly. But only slightly. We're going to ease you back into it. Yeah. It'll be... Uh, the next one will be... Uh, well, actually, I guess this one is your Christmas present. Because this one will come out right before Christmas. Oh, really? I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, we're very sorry. Looks like coal in your stocking this yeah, year. Merry, Merry Christmas. Yeah, happy Hanukkah. Uh, Kwanzaa. Uh, and whatever Satanists celebrate, which is probably just Christmas. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, much like our worst episodes, I don't know how to end this. <laughs> so, good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>